we're live. Are we live? Yes, we are live. We are live. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? How's it going? I hope uh, YouTube's not going to be late now, but uh, we are here, so we're going to get on with it. So hi, everybody, once again, welcome to Pebble, a startup podcast, which is specially built around startups and deep tech and entrepreneurs who are making the news. Pebble is powered by Co-Create Ventures. I'm your host and founder, Vishal Krishna. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you live. If you've got questions, please start asking them because today is all about an algorithm that's going to make sure that your teams do a great job of making you know, your work better. Okay, so what does it mean to build a team? Everyone thinks they've achieved the right mix, but reality shows. Otherwise, more than 60% of teams fail to reach their potential according to research done by Dr. Eunice from the Ken Blanchard company. Okay, 19% of the startups fail because of bad teams. And in fact, research also shows that 300 startups have failed simply because they had no proper teams working for them. And this is as of 2021, ladies and gentlemen. I have uh, Sashank with me, the founder of this lovely startup called Teaming Up, which enables uh, people and companies to create great teams which, are, which share complementing mindsets and goals. Uh, their algorithms use psychometric analysis to help create these dynamic team. Teaming Up is also called a team creation engine. And it helps you guys, like I said, with shared goals and complementary skills, you can build efficient teams, okay? So they use, again, a psychometric algorithm. Just remember, the term is psychometric algorithm to help form dynamic teams. How are you, Sushan? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for having me here. No, Very no, nice. thanks for your time. I mean, <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a long introduction for you and, uh, <laughs> and uh, good to know. We're get, going to get into your guitaring in a bit and what you do and what not and I'm going to come play with you sometime, but I just definitely want to know what is teaming up all about? Because I hear a lot about team building, team efficiency. And sometimes I look at HR and I feel, are they smoking pot? But, you know, in the end, we have to use algorithms to make definitely. sure teams work better. But tell me, what are you solving? So, yeah, uh, teaming up solves one major problem that is, you know, team creation. Uh, for every single team that is being created, there are two aspects of it. One is the team joiners and one is the team creators. There are lots of people who want to go ahead and, you know. Uh, uh, okay, go on. Is, Sorry. Go Sorry. on, go ahead with it. Technical issue. Go ahead with it. It's a technical issue, but go on with it. We are still right, live. Yeah. Go on. Let me All rephrase right. so, the question because uh -huh. we got interrupted, right? So I just want to know, like I said, you know, HR people often worry about how can we build efficient teams they come and give you a lot of knowledge, a lot of tools, but they struggle at times to get people to really solve, you know, efficiency. So that's right. where you come in. I want to know what are you trying to solve and how are you trying to crack this market? Yes. So what we're trying to solve is team creation as a solution, right? Usually what happens is, you know, I'm damn sure you yourself would have put up a lot of posts on LinkedIn or on Instagram saying, I need a team. Right? I need a team of developers. I need a team of engineers. I need this. I need that. Problem is, is one major issue of penetration, right? As the average consumer, as an average user of social media, you probably have around 300, 400 connections, right? But these 300, 400 connections are probably not the right people, you know, for to whom it should uh, go to, right? And, you know, even when you ask them to reshare, right, it probably reaches probably around 20% 20, 20 or, you know, 20 other people. And, you know, they might not even send a request to you, right? So at this point of time, you're faced with one problem, you have too little uh, or a very small pool from which you can pick out your teammates, number one. And number two, even if you do have a very good team, a very good pool of people that you can pick from, you don't know who to pick. Right? And uh, let's assume you picked, let's say the best resume is out of that. Right? Even if you do pick the right, you know, the best resume is only after working with them for two to four weeks, do you actually understand what the team dynamic is? Right? And at that point of time, it's probably too late. Right. And you know, I've seen so many ideas and so many projects keep failing. You know, the, I mean, obviously, uh, it could have been within the university, it can be within organizations, it could be within corporates. There are so many products, so many uh, the projects which are failing just because they couldn't form the right team in the first place. So it's a domino effect. And yeah, that that, that's right. about that's about sums up uh, what, what you do. And uh, obviously, you're a SaaS business. Yes. What is psych psychometry all about? What's psychometry got to do with this? And uh, you know, based on current knowledge, did you take something and build on top of it? Uh, how did you go about, you know, building this algorithm? 
that can help yeah, these so, companies yeah so Yeah, psychometrics uh, helps us to figure out what kind of a role a person plays within a team, right? The, the kind of behavior that they go ahead and possess. Well, and the, we worked on it obviously through, uh, you know, looking into lots of white papers, lots of other research that has been going on for almost seventy, eighty years, you know, dating back to Carl Jung, right? It was one of the first, you know, psychometrists, right? Psychometrists who basically formulated a lot of uh, different, uh, you know, psychometric analysis. So we ended up studied all of their uh, you know, research, and we came up with our own algorithm, right? Something proprietary and something unique, novel, uh, which helps us to figure out, uh, you know, what can be the perfect team for every single individual, because every individual has their own definition of perfect, right? And that is what we're trying to achieve using our psychometric algorithm. Okay, I just wanted to take look, go back to the backstory a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did this begin? I mean, I'm sure you you. Seen a lot of teams fail and all that. Yes. Uh, um, when did you, you know, come upon the well, uh, and how? Yeah. How? I mean, you have co-founders. You can name them. I know some of them are not here. How mm-hmm. did you convince them to come on board? Um, so, what? What was? What was a melting point, a boiling point for you? And you realized that you got to go do this. Yeah. To, so I've been a very creative person, right? You know, uh, for me, it was always about. Uh, Uh, going out there and exploring things right i'm i'm a, i'm a continuous learner right i always want to keep learning new things i want to keep trying new things out and i really don't like going into extreme mainstreams right i really didn't want a 9 to 5 job either so i was like you know what i need to be an entrepreneur i really need to make a very good startup and i went into augmented reality i went and i went into virtual reality i went into ed tech space i tried to make a company there right? but unfortunately every single time i try to make an attempt at forming a great you know company or a great startup or a great product right my teammates were not nice right or you know i wasn't able to just go ahead and complete what i wanted to do we were always fighting we were frustrated incomplete goals in the end you know nothing could happen and at that point of time you know when frustration grows on you you're like okay fine is there a solution for this and then you realize there's no solution chalo i'll only build it okay so okay. that was the mentality i went through but is but but then you know building psychometry tests right i mean you have to look at personality skills abilities uh, to codify that right how do you go about doing that so yeah obviously the it's uh, again through a lot of experimentation and through data that has been c- collected over the years right the uh, frankly speaking the data that you know we possess or the the data that we are calculating is pretty novel and does not properly exist on the internet it's it's like bits and chunks every single place you know lot of research lot of you know time to you know just to go ahead and pick out all of these data points and uh, when we did we after that you know we had to go ahead and experiment it right we went ahead and sent out forms sent out uh, uh, you know lots of interesting questions to a lot of people to go ahead and gather a lot of data to understand what people actually require or what people you know miss within their teams or you know how did well, you know, let's say you know there was a great team how were they a great team right you know getting all of those data points getting those were very this thing and it was an interesting story i mean i got one of my co-founders just this way you know i was sending out forms right so uh, one of my co-founders is vaishnavi and uh, you know we were experimenting and you know we sent out our forms and everything and we we had a preliminary algorithm ready and we were sending out forms and you know this person you know she picked it up she also filled it in she really liked the idea she spoke to us and we were really impressed with you know what she could bring to the table we tested it out with our own psychometric algorithm but we saw how our compatibility was and immediately when you know it gave us excellent results and we were like you know what she's on board and okay. you know has been an integral part of so our you selected your co-founders with your algorithm is it yes i did yes i did you want to name your co-founders yes so i have watched him right there sarthak and that shreyas so sarthak uh, has been a good friend of mine for almost 3 uh, 4 uh, years we met back in first year of uh, it's running within our own college and uh, i always knew he was a very creative guy right he he super he's wild he's a cto so, isn't he yes yes he's super wild super crazy you know always wanted to do fun stuff uh, okay like uh, always building new things and uh, you know i really like that guy so i was like you know what i'm going to approach him with my idea right probably you know he might be interested and that here we are and uh, the next person shreyas so shreyas i mean uh, we found him luck by chance not going to lie all right i'm happy we found him because you know having such a great developer is 
um, definitely a privilege, right? It's very difficult to find really good developers, and you know, we found him through like lots of connections and going forward. Exactly why we require teaming up, right? Right. 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 Going through that entire rabbit hole. Yeah. That's four of you. That's yes. fantastic. Okay, here's what I want to ask you, right? Psychometric assessments, right? Most of them yeah. use it on the onboarding process, mm -hmm. right? And in some form of L and D later on, learning yeah. and development strategies later on, right? I, you know, while they use it for onboarding and learning and development, you're saying all that is fine, right? You can give the right learning, you can give, you know, you can either write higher or whatever, uh, but you're saying unless the teams sync with each other, it's not going to happen, right? That's the hypothesis, correct? And you're a musician yourself, so you understand this better than anybody. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh, where do you, what is the intersection? Because, you know, when you talk about psychometric analysis, for me, large companies do it. Versa Metal does it, right? You know, they've been around for years and there's so many others like modern CP parts Definitely. and all of them. How different are you going to be from these kind of people? So, so I'm just going to break it down to you. Right? So there are two aspects of, you know, the, the, we call ourselves a team creation engine, right? Where we place ourselves is exactly in between hiring and the people in project management. Right? When it comes to hiring, right, you could use a segment analysis, et cetera, et cetera. There are millions of companies who do this. Right, you know, they help out, you know, to figure out who their best candidates are. And once they are put in to the organization, mm -hmm. right, that is where we want to come into play. The next step is obviously using, you know, project and people management tools like Slack, GitHub, Asana. But that is yeah. after the team has been created. Right. And where we fall is right in between. Right? Once the uh, member is onboarded into the organization and before they're put into a team. Right. So we want to be that you know missing piece and right? niche, but very critical process. Okay. Yeah. How does that work now? Say, okay, I've onboarded your, you know, say I'm Infosys and I've onboarded, for example, again, hypothetically guys from Infosys don't worry, don't mind. If you're popular, <laughs> I use your name. So yeah, yeah. Say they've on, an IT services company has onboarded people yep. and now it wants to build something for a Ford, for example. Uh, it's an IT services project for Ford. It could include networking. It could include cloud management, the whole thing, or building platforms, or even blockchain. So people, how do they go about it? They have team leaders looking for the right qualification. So, they say, okay, um, can I mean, experiment. So how does yeah. it work? Go on. So, I mean, it works in a pretty simple way, right? You know, you're obviously measuring a, a dynamic compatibility score here. Now, our compatibility score possesses of, you know, three aspects, right? Number one mm -hmm. is the skills that can match, the roles that can match, and also the psychometric, right? It's a, it's a dynamic score. So, let's say all the team leader or, right, or the project lead, all they have to do is post the project on the platform, right? Now, okay. we do two things here. One is we push the project to all the individuals we feel like are a very good fit. Mm -hmm. right, for that particular project, based on the roles, based on the psychometry that they possess, right, the behavior that they possess, and the skills that they possess. Right, we push it. On the flip side of things, we also recommend to this person as to who they need to recommend, you know, who they need to bring in. Right. So, so let's say I push the project. Once I do push the project, you know, these people, the that uh, the project joiners, essentially, they get to apply, right, and here they get to review and they get a compatibility score. Now, this compatibility score is something very very important. Let's say you're a project lead, all right, and you are you know creating a team today for you know for it, all right, who's a client and you're trying to build some sort of uh, software for them. Right. All you have to do is go ahead and type in that small description saying I'm building a, this thing for fault and you know it requires uh, what's that so and so software. The moment you go ahead and say that, we have a recommendation system which will tell you the kind of roles and the skills that are required for the project. Right. Uh, the reason why we developed this was because, you know, number one, there are lots of people who have amazing, interesting ideas. I'll take a very random example. Okay. Uh, let's say I want to do a documentary on the Agume forest. Very random. Right. And, you know, I want to go ahead and do this, but I'm very passionate about it. I have no clue as to what I require. Right. Come onto our platform, you go ahead and type a description saying, you know, I want to do a documentary of the Agumi Forest. I'm looking for passionate individuals. Right. Our, uh, that our recommendation system will pick those up and will tell me exactly what you require. You require a videographer, you require a photographer, you require a content editor, right? And the skills that are required for every single one of those roles. Right. So for a videographer, you require uh, you know, videography as a skill. You require premium pro, you need After Effects. Right. And, you know, for a photographer, you require Lightroom, you need to know Photoshop, right, et cetera. So that is one aspect. And uh, 
you know once they do post it onto the platform let's stop technology let's stick it to technology also but i'm glad you're saying that this can be applied anywhere for filmmakers yes. hmm. you know if they want they could use it so yes. i'm glad you ngos can use it i understand let's take case studies quickly mm-hmm. uh you're saying that even it professionals can use it correct uh even people in business can use it in the yes. business side of things yes right if they want an effective sales team they can build something on your platform Definitely. Definitely. right and they can find the talent within their organization exactly instead of uh, getting something external exactly. is that what you're trying to say also exactly yes so uh, we'll also be enabling i mean like i said we'll be recommending people who we feel like are amazing right now just to elaborate on the you know, dynamic uh, you know compatibility score right so like i said let's say you posted all of this right you get the recommended roles you get the recommended skills and you know it's being pushed to all of those people right once they send it let's say three people are there abc and uh, abc uh, you know really like your project and you know they want to team up with you they want to start teaming up with you right they send in a request let's say a b and c have a 90% 85% and an 80% compatibility right let's say you are really impressed with b's profile and you know what you're like you know what, i'm going to take this person in the moment you take that person in a's and c's compatibility can go up or down now that is what makes us novel now why is this so because it's no longer just about you versus the next person coming in it's about the team versus the next person who's coming in right so overall we're always trying to benefit the team right and try to bring together the best team possible so a could go up okay. from 80 to 95 and c could go from 80 to 60 right so we're trying to you know shape the best uh, that suggestions possible For, you, know, you know what i liked is you also reduce time to in- innovation right instead of doing long rounded interviews exactly yes uh you could just post it out there post these tests out there but are these i mean sometimes what about the people who are not particularly good at tests but they could certainly be uh, great in a team is that, does that work at all i mean have you have you you know uh, thought about this at all uh tests meaning you do psycho your algorithm checks them out right uh, mm-hmm. it matches them based on their resumes the work that they've done the learning that they have right Correct. so that's how you test the algorithm tests them right that okay mm-hmm. shall's got these skills maybe it matches with these guys mm-hmm. i'm talking about not this the linear approach but an alternate approach right where does the algorithm also make random choices saying okay maybe maybe this guy is a good communicator and can still fit in very well with this team yeah. uh, are you, are you provisioning for that yeah so what we do provide is an analysis of you know uh, of the behavior of a person within you know a team right okay. so we have around 20 to 25 different you know carefully diagnosed phenotypes that right? we try to put people into a box however mm-hmm. trying to put people into a box is a very difficult process right mm-hmm. which obviously we are you know we're taking forward and you know trying to develop it make it much more wider right now when we do put all of these people into these boxes that right, we uh, like we make sure that you know we can push the best possible projects for them right not just based on their skills but also on the mindset that they can provide within a team right and uh, that is what we want to do yeah. okay how's your first set of sales been like uh, what's been the experience you've been piloting i heard you've been piloting in many places at this yes. point of time well, what what's been the experience i heard you've done education at this point of time you're also trying out some other other industries like ngos but you have tried have you tried corporate yet also you can talk about the pilots that you're doing go on yeah so currently you know we're trying to pilot in our own university that right? we're going to events and hackathons uh, where we see a very big potential hackathons universities and uh, definitely ngos Right. there is actually ngos and private organizations we actually spoke to a few people right within all of these prominent organizations and we realized a very big critical factor right there is only a 10 to 15% of active users even though they have such a huge uh, human resource right? even though there are so many members only 10 to 15% of them are actually actively participating and the reason for this was um, uh, number one you know the team joiners the project joiners not having enough information about what the project creators are doing yeah absolutely right. so that is something that has been solved on our platform because on our platform right you get an entire view right a bird's eye view of all the things that are happening within the thing and you get to join the teams where you you know where your interest lies and uh, obviously we are trying to push that uh, towards organizations right now piloting in a few more days a few more weeks probably and uh, corporates are something that we are definitely looking into mm-hmm. right uh, 
And they throw well, how would you deliver it? Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, see, all the big companies like Mercer that I just mentioned, right? Mercer works with all those companies I mentioned, Modern, CPS, and all that, right? Uh, how would you how would you want to do the sales process? It's not enterprise sales in this case, right? Uh, people can just go to your website and download the tool and use it. Is it a SaaS model or or is it an enterprise model? Have you thought through? Yes, so it's a SaaS B two B platform, right? So we are providing our platform and essentially creating bubbles within organizations, right? So that they can go ahead and you know collaborate better within their own organizations, right? So if, if it was in a corporate setting, we'd be probably providing it as a tool, right? To these project leaders, project managers, and for them to go ahead and create uh, teams. And, you know, we give them recommendations as to, you know, who would be the best people onto their teams. They get a dynamic compatibility score. The moment they bring in one person, the other people's compatibility may go up or down. But that way they can create a very good uh, uh, dynamic and cohesive team. So you've created dashboards for them once, uh, yes. once you download it. And how, and it's deployed per user basis or a license basis? Uh, what have you thought about? <laughs> so yeah, right. as of right now, you know, we have multiple packages. Right. Again, it's a negotiable thing and uh, multiple packages, which is on a per user basis itself. Right. Um, what we do provide is obviously the platform. And the second thing is the analytics dashboard. Right. A lot of um, the analytics dashboard, we believe in data driven approach. Right. We believe that, you know, data can give so many good insights right, to the organization themselves. You know, let's take any private organization or, you know, corporate, you know, if they're, if it's, you know let's look at the teams that are being, you know, formed there. Right now, you get to know who the top domains are. Right, what domains are you know? If you take Infosys as an example, which top domains are being worked on the most? Right, who are the highest skilled in each domain? Who are the top contributors in each domain? Right, once you do figure out that, um, next thing is you can go ahead and train. All right, you can go ahead and cater to the was it uh, to your uh, employees. Right now, if you say that you know someone is lacking behind in these skills, or you know this particular group of people are lacking behind in these, but this particular group is actually doing very well in something, and now you can go ahead and cater it because you have the data insights from what we could provide. Okay, yeah. you mentioned university, so I'm presuming you're at uh, your university when you said it's PES University. True. Uh, incidentally, the you've also been funded by Co-Create Ventures and Pesu Venture Labs. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, you want to talk about that round? How did that happen? Uh, I mean, I mean, it, it's it's interesting because yeah, I don't want to disclose your age, but young as you are, it's very interesting that you've got support so early and quite a substantial sum. Why is that important? And why is it important uh, for student entrepreneurs to actually get there? And you're in your final year, I suppose, right? Right. Yes. So. Uh, how, how important is it to be in such platforms for you? So um, there are a lot of individuals out there. There are a lot of people out there, students like myself, who have amazing ideas. Because um, I feel like you know, um, students or you know the younger generation know what the critical problems are of society, right? Immediately, right now they know exactly what needs to be solved. And uh, giving a platform for such kind of you know student startups or you know student organizations is a very important thing, right? Frankly speaking, I'm you know I you know, came to, you know, uh, Pesu Venture Labs. Pesu Venture Labs is obviously, you know, co-create and uh, Pesu having a joint collaboration and uh, came to Pesu Venture Labs, pitched it to Mr. Suresh, right, an amazing individual, uh, gave a good pitch. You know, at first, obviously things were shaky, you know, there were a lot of things that could go wrong, uh, kept, but they kept pushing us, right? They kept what are some us. of the things that you got wrong that you pitched better and won, and won their funding? Well, um, Let's uh, let's uh, let's not talk about those for today. <laughs> right. I what could have know. gone wrong? What what what? How have you changed in the last one year since you raised money? Um, definitely a few. Uh, what's that? Um, a few feature changes. Right, the way we go ahead and present things. Right, obviously you know that it requires a you know a little bit of maturity to go ahead and you know make a very good uh, presentation to go ahead and speak very well to people. Um, getting that gathering knowledge, right? Figuring out what the industry requires and how do you mold the yeah. product based it helped on you at the product level itself. They help you design yes. uh, certain things that uh, go well with industry. Very, very well said. And I wish you all the best with them. And I wish you all the best to raise more money. Uh, sure. But let's take some audience questions and get back to the business again, right? Sure. This is a question from Nitish Varma. He says, yeah, is this only a B2B platform or can it be B2C as well? Uh, or will the product be sold directly to organizations or can any student or anybody in a college or a small business just download this and use it? 
Uh, I would say that you're a pure B2B SaaS company for businesses and NGOs and organizations as such, right? At this point. But would you like to re have a long tail for individuals also? So uh, it's definitely something that is super interesting, having a B2C platform right, where you know, it's an open collaboration system right, where anybody could find anybody. It's something that we're pushing as a narrative within universities as of right now. We, yeah, that's we, good. We know that universities are the crux of collaboration, right? So cross-domain collaboration is super important when it comes to you know, having a startup or having any kind of project. I've, I've talked to so many people, you know, uh, biotech department or, you know, or talk to electronics department, mechanical engineers, they, they have such amazing projects, but just because they couldn't find students from computer science, they were like, okay, man, I'm going to drop it. Right? So okay. many ideas die out, right? Just because they're not able to put together the right uh, team. And, uh, you know, that's definitely something we're trying to solve. Going B2C okay. is definitely a very good, interesting uh, aspect. I think the marketplace B2C. model, like you suggested for university sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, let's take the next question. It's from uh, Kiriti. He mm -hmm. says, does the algorithm in place consider different factors like age? Because classifying the, he says, classifying the psyche of a 20 year old uh, undergrad student can be very different from a 35 year old in a corporate. So is there some con consideration of experience that you take and age that you take into your- uh, um, Yeah, so again, uh, was that we always give the, uh, was that our recommendation system pushes based on psychometry right on behavior analysis and obviously the skills that they possess but again we always give the freedom to the project leader to go ahead and pick out who they need that i am only going to go ahead and be a tool that i'm going to suggest you people or i'm going to get you those people right? but i'm never going to push it down your throat saying you need to take this guy right and uh, the second thing is obviously you know psyche is definitely matter right however uh, in the way we have calculated things they don't give out such a big outlier right they're not such a big outlier Right, because the behavior of people within teams, right, is almost always consistent, or you know, it keeps changing, you know, over time, five years, okay. six years down the line. Yeah. Okay. And is this a process that has to be repeated by teams as they grow and evolve over time? Uh, this uh, is by, asked by uh, Yes. So by individuals, yes. Right, because obviously a person evolves. Right, every individual will go ahead and evolve in their own way. Right, a person who could be super dominant and super exertive right or assertive could become a very mellow person right in the future so it's definitely something that we do push that so that we can understand you know what kind you know, the best way we can cater to those individuals yeah okay okay now the interesting aspect for me are uh you know i i like the fact that you said that teams you know team managers don't have to waste time interviewing right uh you know, the algorithm finds it within the organization right uh, how relevant is HR when people like you show up and say that the algorithm can do it for them because that segment is fast being automated. So is there a strategic view that uh, you will help the HR with that the HR can now be strategic in creating teams? Definitely something that we're looking into because we feel like it can have a lot of potential within companies right? because uh, obviously, you know, having a great team helps in building great products. Uh, you know, there was a great team which built Google. There was a great big team which built Oculus. Right? There was a great team, and you know, startups originate out of these companies. Right? And sometimes these, uh, you know, special interest projects, right, are taken up by the companies which the companies themselves incubate and take them forward. Right? So if we can give deliver the best team possible in the first place, then you know there can be a huge uh, impact on the way things work. Obviously, you know, given that you know you spoke about the research that uh, that came out, right? Almost it was a top reason for a startup to fail. Right? A top reason for you know, sixty percent of teams don't reach their potential just because they yeah, didn't get the right team. You mentioned you mentioned it to me. It's, it's because yeah. they don't have the right team. Is about the top three things True. when it comes to not having the right team is why a startup fails. It's the top. The first two being no market or product fit. Uh, second thing is they run out of cash. And the third one is uh, they don't have the right team. Yeah. It, it's interesting. So founders can use it. So you have different pricing for you know, founders to find their teams by using your product. Is that possible? How do they do that? Is, are you going to be linked to some HR portals where they can come and use your product? Is that how you want to tell founders to use your services? Or will it be 
used only for the largest the large companies or NGOs or what? So yeah, as of right now, obviously it's going to remain within you know bigger organizations, right? Rather than for smaller individuals to go ahead and form teams, right? The major challenge over there is obviously you know you should have a lot of profiles, right? So if you know if I am a startup founder and if I want a great team, right, then I would basically require team up to be a B two C product. Right, and and it's something that you know we definitely want to do over time, right? Because uh, you know, giving an opportunity for all these kind of young people, or you know, I mean, no matter their age, right? You know, they should be able to go ahead and form the best teams for themselves, right? For for them to work on their ideas. So Are you going to be selling this year, and how difficult is it going to be for you to sell? Uh, because, are you going to focus on uh, you know online marketing as such? Are you going to go offline? Uh, is it going to be sales, uh, sales first or marketing first? Are you going to go be part of events? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve right now? Are you going to do, uh, you know, sales from India for the world? Are you just going to be focused on India? What are your um, thoughts? I mean, the goal is definitely to go global, right? Obviously, uh, however, you know, as of right now, given our conditions, we are sticking to you know a more localized market. Because uh, you're a small team, you're a team of five members, four members. Yeah. Yes, true. I mean, we obviously are going to go ahead and, you know, get in more resources uh, as we move forward and, you know, have a better tech team, have a better marketing team, have a better sales team and make our product deeper. And uh, what we are currently doing is approaching all of these, you know, getting leads right now, approaching all of these corporates and all of these uh, universities and NGOs. Uh, we've gotten a lot of good positive responses. A lot of people have uh, what's that, uh, been very open to having us pilot with them and, you know, eventually even buy our product, right? Uh, given our packages. Okay. Yeah. So 2022 is all about pilots and probably signing commercial agreement. Yes. Right. So I, I'm going to wish you all the best on that note. Uh, right. Uh, are you going to be raising more money? Uh, are you open to hiring? Uh, and uh, can people contact you at this point of time? How does that work? Should they just ping you on LinkedIn? Yeah. So you know, I'm always available on LinkedIn. I'm available on Instagram. But definitely hiring. You know, you can start teaming up with us. And uh, uh, that yes, we are definitely looking to raise funds. Right. Uh, but that we obviously want to be people. Right? We want to. Uh, we want to become a very good team. Right. Um, we want to build something great, something, uh, you know, something that can achieve and become a very big company in the future. Right. Okay. And we obviously require the funds to do that. Tell us, your, tell us your website so that people can go and use your. Yes, so our website is uh, www.teamnup.io. Teamnup.io. Is there an yeah. early beta out that I could sign up for or, or they could use a commercial version? Yes, they are, no, they, we have a beta of this thing. As of right now, obviously everything is closed. All right, uh, well, you know, you can send in a request and we'll probably get you in. So, so the pilot that you're doing at PS uh, is obviously running. It's been running for a while now, right? Uh, yeah. And is there any specific reasons why they're using Team and Up? Uh, well, uh, so that obviously. Is it for uh, research or is it for their tech teams or is it for their ac academicians to collaborate or what? So, as of right now, what we're trying to do is keep it extremely open. Right. We want to see as to how they use our product. Right. We want to understand our customers better. Right. As of right now, they have you know huge potential to go ahead and use our product. They have different different use cases. They're coming up with new use cases for us. And right. someone wants to make a band tomorrow, and right. instead of going and spamming Instagram or you know and spamming uh, LinkedIn, right, for a tech team, right. just come on our platform, put up the post. Right. We make sure that the post reaches all of the people, and you know they can start teaming up. Right. So. Uh, that it could be a music band, it could be a NGO that the students want to take up. It could be the faculty who want to put up projects for their students, right? Or the faculty who's doing research and they want to, you know, take in students and they want to start working on things. Okay. And above Any all, message to corporate that why should they use your product? I know you. I want you to reiterate it simply because I'm bringing it back in hmm. because you're saying if they may use it for onboarding, they may use it for L&D, learning and development. You're saying use it to make better teams, right? Yes. So, so wh why would you? Wh what message would you give them? My message is very simple: by you, by creating a great team, you're creating better products. Right? Why should they use your product, though? Why should they use our product? Because we do that. We feel like we can do this the best. You think that your algorithm can do that the best? Can it look through all my two hundred thousand employees and find and help them create better teams? And is there no overlap between managers who want to create a fight between managers? I'm just asking. Hey, I, mean, I wanted, to, I wanted to pull in Shashank to my team, but you know, you've got him. Can the can then the person work in multiple teams? 
Yes, there are there are ways in which you can resolve conflicts within our own uh, analytics dashboard. Right within our dashboard, you can go ahead and manage your teams. Right, you can go ahead and you know allocate resources if you would like to. Right, uh, there is a pretty good portal. Right, which we provide and pretty simple we we make sure that you know we give all the information that is required by all of these managers and you know they can make an informed decision while uh, they pick out their teams yeah. okay let's take some audience questions okay <laughs> which is going to make sure that people you answer them well and they can perhaps turn out <laughs> to be your investors or business folks uh, okay this is jai lakshmi what metric have you used to evaluate team performance what is the metric do you have anything Yes, as of right now, we are uh, going forward with uh, uh, the getting inputs directly from the teams that are you know using our product. Right, we're trying to get no feedback. Right, as of right now, uh, by using this feedback, we're understanding how good their teams have been. Right, and on top of that, you know, we're implementing a project tracking technology, right, a project tracking feature, which will also enable us to you know, gather data to understand how the team have been performing, how the team have been performing. So that is how. We are positioning. Okay. There. Are you different from team form? How different are you? This is from Krishna. How different are you from team form? Team form. Yeah, there's a company called Team Form. Apparently, they do similar. It's okay if you don't. If you have. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, uh, that I'll definitely you know look into it. I'm not. Yeah, very that's a good answer. If you don't know, you don't know. It's fine. Yeah. But uh, but but it's good that you said that. Okay, at this level, any you you can resolve the situation of different team managers going after a particular bunch of people. That was interesting for me. And okay, next question from Nitish Varma: Does your algorithm only show factors that are compatible between individuals, or does it also flag possible conflicts in a team? Like I asked. Sorry, uh, could you repeat? I'll repeat the question mm -hmm. again. This is from Nitish. It's important mm -hmm. to hear him out. Does your algorithm only show factors that are compatible between individuals, or does it also flag possible conflicts in a team? Yes. So uh, in the beginning, obviously, you know, you have to create the team, right? So when you're creating a team, you're picking out the individuals who have a higher compatibility with you, right? So obviously, you know, the people who have a lower compatibility, you obviously are not going to take them in. So it's automatically flagged off in that way. Okay. Yeah. So you have that provision. Yes. But okay, will your team, will your product take into consideration that okay, once somebody creates a team. Mm -hmm. uh, and if and the team performance is actually bad, would you say that it requires a certain lo level of timeline for the team to sink? Mm -hmm. I'm just quoting an analogy from a movie here. We've seen the money ball, all of us. Yeah, yeah the money ball, yeah. yeah, yeah the money right ball. team, it does take time for them to actually go True. up. Right? True, true, true. So, so, would you suggest that that's the way you want to go ahead and do think about this? I mean, uh, obviously, you know, there are a lot of teams which can, you know, just click instantly and get started. Right? There are teams which require a long period of time before they can actually start clicking and, you know, going forward with things. What we aim to provide, right, what we believe we can provide is the, uh, you know, is the latter, you know, instantly try and get them to click, right, and take it forward. Right? That is what we aim to provide. That's what we believe we can provide. Okay, that's good. Next question is from Guru Shankar. Definitely. Okay, Guru Shankar Kasi Vignanam. Okay, and uh, and he's got an interesting question. With every large team, there's always going to be friction. He says, and he goes on to add, "Do you do you think your algorithm can minimize friction by making them work with the same team, but uh, with the least amount of interaction?" I mean, uh, see, where we fall is again, like I said, you know, team creation. All right, and nothing beyond that, right? So now you know if that person wants to stay on the same team or wants to leave that team, and depending on the entire team itself, right? What we aim to provide is a friction-free team, right? What we aim to provide is a friction-free team where you know there's as minimum friction as possible, where you know there is compatible, complementary mindsets which are playing, and uh, you know that you know everyone can gel together and actually start clicking and working uh, with each other, yeah. Okay, there's more questions, and I love this, and I love love it when there are questions. Uh, I th I think yesterday's episode set the precedent for today. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to thank the Fizzle for team for that, and your bunch of uh, friends who are looking at this. Right, yeah. this is Chetan Atni. Yeah, you know, uh, and they say, or he or he says, pardon me, uh -huh. would there arise issues of consent with respect to psychometric analysis and tests? 
So when you say consent, uh, yes. Yeah, no. because I might not want to work with this particular person, but the algorithm says he's the right person for you. Um, no, I think he spoke. He is asking regarding you know whether you would give the psychometric yeah, analysis yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. I might not want the algorithm to uh, figure out who my you. data. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's it's a trade off, right? There's always going to be a trade off. I mean, if you log on to Facebook, right? You want to log on to Facebook or Instagram because you want to see that. But you should you provide such there. a provision, right? I mean, it's yeah. only healthy for you saying that some individuals may not want. Their data to be scrapped within the. I mean, uh, they don't want to so, be crawled. Pardon me. They don't want it to be crawled within the organization. But you're saying, I get what you're saying. Once you're part yeah. of the organization, you're yeah. part of a system, and you need to. True. Need However, to there is a way in which we we can go ahead and not provide. You know, you know, if they, even if they don't provide the psychometric analysis, right? They still get. Because I don't want it to go out tomorrow and say that hey, these guys didn't qualify to this team. You know what yeah. I'm saying? True. 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 So you know, even if they didn't provide their psychometric analysis, there is still a way in which you know our platform can have a very huge impact, because obviously they get to see all the projects that are happening, they get to join in, or right, they get to communicate with people, right, all within our own platform, right, without even having to go out of the organization or you know trying to search by themselves, which is a very big pain, right. I can still provide a compatibility score, all right, but that is based entirely on the skills that they possess and the interests that they have. And these skills and these interests, we get out through GitHub, we get out through LinkedIn. We go ahead and scrape their user profiles, and we figure this out. Or you know, or the user themselves have gone ahead and given the skills or the interests that they possess. So compatibility can still be provided, right? But instead of psychometry, it would be giving this thing, right? Just skills and interests, and that I feel would defeat the purpose a bit. So we would be better if we had the psychometric analysis. Okay, the jury is out there, and I wish you all the best. But there's more questions. Definitely. This is Krishna and Mehta. Okay. What about that one person who might not be compatible with anyone in a team that is already formed using your tool that uh -huh. pops up later in time? He goes uh -huh. on to add, uh -huh. other than having better market penetration, how do you plan on outpacing your competitors who are really big in the market? All right. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna address the first one. All right. So yeah. I'm gonna reiterate on the same point. Right. You. Let's say you're a project creator, where right? you created the project today. You are picking in the people that you need, and our compatibility score will keep changing as per the next person you take in. All right. Let's say I take in Mr. Vishal right onto my team. Right. There are ABC people who have 80, 85, 90 percent. They might go up or they might go down. All right. Once one person goes up, and I take, let's say I take A into my team, B and C still have a different psychometric score or a different compatibility score. Let's say I take B onto my team, right? We're still trying to go ahead and create a team creation, you know, team chemistry fit, right? And this fit is not just based on, you know, their psychometry. It's also based on the roles that they provide for that team, Super. right? And also the skills that they bring into the team, right? You know, one individual, let's say, you know, you have a role called photographer, right? And that photographer, one person knows photography and the other person knows, you know, Photoshop. All right now you want but you have given one the role as photographer and photoshop as their skill right we will make sure to bring both of these guys to you right we'll make sure to you know go ahead and push this project to both of these guys so that you can make an informed decision right because usually before what what used to happen was an intuition based approach right it's a gut feeling based approach there was never an informed decision right now what we're trying to enable is give an informed decision to the project creators so that they can pick out the right teammates for themselves um, could you repeat that second question? The second question is, uh, you know, you know, other than having better market penetration, which mm -hmm. you still have to get market penetration. Right? Yeah. I, how do you plan to outpace your competitors? So as of right now, right, we do not have a direct competition as such. Right? Ah, come on. Tashant, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, no. That? Uh, yeah. I think Mercer's people would be laughing their ass out, but I would I would certainly have to say that. Uh, but you, why are you different? Again, I'm going to ask you: Are you different because of the way you deliver it? And now again, how do you plan to outpace your competitors? So is yours. Yeah. So obviously, you know what we provide is very novel. All right. Um, uh, that the penetration that we have is definitely novel. All right. What we're trying to provide is very novel. Right. When it comes to our competition, they're trying to build a different product. Right. They're not trying to build what we have, and uh -huh. they're trying to build something else, right? Which is pretty much different from what we are trying to provide as a platform, and that is you know where we would uh, fall in. Yeah. Okay, no, I wish. I mean, I, one thing is for sure. I like your 
I like the way you're confident about yourself. I'm sure there can be others in the market too, but you are confident about selling it. And I, and I certainly think you have, you certainly have the craft to go sell it. Okay. And I, and I must say that that's a skill that you carry and that'll be great. Uh, let's go to Lalit Aditya, right? Uh, that's a question again from Lalit. He says, if an individual is skilled, but the algorithm makes him as not compa compatible, I believe I have a skill, or you believe you have a skill, but the algorithm says that you don't have this, or you're not compatible. As in, then he goes on to add, Lalit goes on to add that as human individuals, or as humans, he says, there is always a scope of adaptivity. The person might be fitting in better actually how would your algorithm actually look at this isn't it too cold to say that you're not compatible uh okay so see that's why you have to realize shadi that shadi.com and all those matchmaking sites make people meet you know true. and so, then I they mean, decide but then they don't work that's another story altogether so go on yeah go on. So, um number one okay like you said um from the experiments that we have conducted from the data that we have gathered we have noticed that you know, population is a very heterogeneous uh, mixture, right? Uh, the population of the earth is a very heterogeneous mixture. Like the moment you pick out a person, right? Uh, if you take a group of 100 people, I'm very sure you can find all the 22 phenotypes or 25 phenotypes or 30 phenotypes that we have defined within that group. Right? This is at least from the studies that we have figured out. So there is definitely a way for every individual to fit in, right? And like I said, uh, I'm going to reiterate on this point. Every individual has their own version of perfect, right? And that is what we're trying to achieve, right? So by giving that, uh, was that you know, every individual's perfect team, right? We get to go ahead and you know let them collaborate better. So obviously, second thing, you know, it is not that cold, right? uh, you know, saying that you know this person's compatible or not, because I'm trying to give them a better opportunity. Right. Obviously, you can still go ahead and you know try to sign in, or you can try to team up with that person. And again, but that um, it's always going to be on the team leader to you know on whether they want to take that person in or not. And what I'm giving is a suggestion. I'm not saying that you know you, this is the right guy. You need to take him. I'm going to push it on the road. Right. What I'm going to do is suggest, right? And being a suggestion engine is definitely not a problem. Yeah. Okay, great. This is Guru Shankar who asks, Does it <laughs> offer a does it offer key improvement areas for individuals? For example, could it tell him uh, if it could, if he could be more assertive or if he can be less aggressive mm -hmm. or is it a win-win situation for both the organization and the person? Yeah. So the moment we go ahead and do take the psychometric test, right? We go, you know, like I said, we have 20, 25 different uh, phenotypes. We do tell the individual, all right, what kind of a person they are and what kind of a role they play in the team. Right. We do tell them, right? We tell them, okay, you could be a leader, you could be a specialist, you could be a changer, you could be an influencer, right? You could be all of these different you know, categories or phenotypes of people within the team, right? And we do tell it to you, right? Now it's up to you to go ahead and, you know, whether you want to go ahead and actually make those changes, right? And uh, use that data as an insight to yourself on, you know, how you could improve, right? But it's our duty to go ahead and give you that information and we do it. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Somebody wants to ask your backstory. Okay. <laughs> um, when, at what, you're not that old, but she says, Aditi says, at what point in your life did you decide that you need something like teaming up? And you answered that in the early, early yeah. part of the program, but I mean, say it quickly for her sake. I mean, it's uh, straightforward, you know, I've been trying to do so many things, man. I've been a very curious individual, always wanting to build awesome stuff. I uh, try to do augmented reality, virtual reality, ed tech and stuff. But again, team formation was a very big challenge, right? I couldn't get my projects done in my own college, right? I couldn't do my, pro you know, I couldn't do my projects well. I didn't have the right team. And at one point of time, it's, it's frustration that leads to solutions, right? I, I strongly believe that, you know, solving one's own problems and then monetizing it is the best startup, right? Because you yourself are the customer, all right? You are the first customer for your product. And that is the, you know, that is my, you know, I get, it. I get what that. you're saying. So yeah. you, so, but are you an overachiever? Is that the reason you feel that others don't overachieve like you? Is that no. the reason why you think such a platform needs, is needs for, I mean, I understand what you're saying yeah. because you're a musician. I play a little bit of music. So I know yeah. musicians can be sticklers for perfection. <laughs> uh, are you one of those types or, uh, or is, or did, did you always want to have, uh, be surrounded by people brighter than you? Is that what you want? Uh, is that why you built built yeah. this product 
so uh, for me it has always been about one very crucial thing and uh, it's about people not giving up on their dreams right there's so many individuals who have such great ideas they go and talk to their parents their parents would be like 10 cgpa to go <laughs> right <laughs> go to something here in your life go get a job right? there's such great ideas and they get discouraged right? you know they go talk to their friends and they be like ah oh, i want to do a startup you guys want to join it right and they are not able to put together the right team and every single time this happens they just give up on their dreams they'll be like are koi aur kar lega and they just stop it right so many ideas so many projects so many things that could have happened right it could be within a corporate setting as well you know some some guy has a very good suggestion on a new feature that you know that could be game changing for their uh, entire product right he goes and tells his you know coworkers saying you know what i have this amazing idea or he goes and talks to his team lead you know i have this amazing idea right but then you know they don't agree or you know they don't do this thing i was not able to find uh, you know people who are at least like minded and you know at least have the same skills and the same interest to work on that idea instead they just drop it they be like okay fine chhod do it's okay i'm not going to do anything about it and that is the frustration right that is the you know you could say it's almost like anger right because so many people giving up is a very big pain so i was like this yeah. this is something i have to do right that you know it can help lots of people that is the main goal yeah okay again there's a question mm-hmm. um you know when you evaluated your team with team enough mm-hmm. team enough and its algorithms what were some of the results do you want to you want to talk about it because your co-founders might not like it <laughs> all right frankly speaking we had a very good result i am not going to go ahead and uh, 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 reveal what the results were but uh, trust me on this it was a very good result like we had a very good phenotype right all of our phenotypes were very much complementing and i mean frankly speaking we've been working so well together and it's a proof or an indication of how good our team has been right with super dynamic you know, i have a question on sociology yeah. on this okay mm-hmm. all small things all good things start small like the greek city states yeah true like rome but they mm-hmm. all become empires and decay right so don't you think the algorithm has to provision for that sorry i don't you think it. the algorithm has to provision for the decay the larger an organization gets mm-hmm. you may not really do well because its interests may be aligned to something else but i feel like having more data right will also help organizations to make better teams that way right so you can go ahead and create mini bubbles within your own organization is right? that is isn't that counterintuitive with i agree with what you're saying in a sense it creates great competition healthiness and all that yes but but when a, when an organization is large enough not to align with these micro teams mm-hmm. you think it's a problem or are you too young to answer this it's okay i mean i don't know yeah probably. so probably. i understand where you're going i'm sorry about that but that's a question oh, oh, keep oh. I'm definitely going to think about it definitely going to think yeah. about it yes. so this is a question from mayur uh, there's so many questions man you're a popular guy <laughs> so here's a nitesh varma says if a company reports to you that a team formed by you uh, did not hit their performance targets what will your review process be like your algorithm and its re- and its review process be like to address this definitely something that you know it's going to learn all right so machine learning algorithm that right? it's based on ai and every single suggestion that we get every single thing we get right weights are being adjusted right things are going to be changed and we hope to provide a better system right again it's always going to be a data driven approach right trying to figure out the best possible team is what we can provide right yeah. very good very good so okay next question mayur now now that the app is out of beta testing uh what you what have you improved on and what would you like to improve on um obviously you know uh, so we have a great app right now right uh, there are a few more features that we would like to add and you know we require depth and you know we're getting there right we are actually okay. developing and deploying all of those features and we should be there in a few, you know probably a few weeks time yeah okay and uh, next this you know perhaps you want to leave your email by saying it because uh-huh. i think there's a lot of questions right So this is Jayalakshmi. Will your algorithm test project risk factors? Sorry, project risk factors. Yes, risk. project risk. She's talking about project risks. You know, every corporation has a project risk that they have to assess, and mm-hmm. there is a team that goes after it. Will your algorithm also test that if it wants? You can... I can help you create the team which goes ahead and does this project risk. Analysis. Okay, so give out your email ID right now so yes. that she can contact you. Go on. So my email is Shashank Lokesh at teamenup dot io. S H A S H A N K L O K E S H at 
T-E-A-M-I-N-U-P.io. Shashank Lokesh at teaminup.io. Feel free to reach out to me. Shashank Lokesh at teaminup.io. You're going to put it out at the YouTube description later on and on LinkedIn too, for sure. Okay, Mm -hmm. Jai Lakshmi, that's a wonderful question. Please give him a chance if you're in a corporate setup. Okay, that'd be lovely. Here's Kirtana asking me a question too. And so she's going to, I'm going to throw throw that back to you. Of course, does your psychometric analysis uh, evolve with more number of people as time goes by and as uh, they interact? Um, And again, this next question she asks is, can it be a global company or uh, does it do so for global companies or for particular subsidiaries in in small small towns or cities? Yes. So number one, yes, obviously it is going to keep evolving based on you know the data that we provide. Right. The more and more data that we get, obviously it is going to improve. Right. And you know based on the suggestions and based on the feedback that we possess, it's always going to move forward and become better. And yes, it can be used on a global scale. And yes, it can be used on a smaller scale as well. Yeah. Okay, phenomenal, man. Let me check if there are more questions. I think, uh, you know, the point of your popularity proves it all. I think this has been a wonderful <laughs> conversation for me, simply because uh, the way you answer things, very confident, and I'm sure you're a band leader, you're a musician, right? My question to you is, uh, do you still continue to play it, uh, yeah. guitar? Do you want to continue playing it? Or what do you do for uh, in your free time other than teaming up? I mean, uh, eat, sleep, dream, uh, repeat, team up. <laughs> but uh, other than that, obviously, sometimes hobbies are, you know, I play music, I do sing a lot. Right? But uh, right now it's been cornered off to, you know, just a bathroom singing. <laughs> and uh, other than that, obviously, it's been, uh, I play video games. I love video games. I don't know. That's it. Which one? Ma- mention the names. I, I, got I got a lot. I got a lot of first person shooters. I got a lot of adventure games. Not name names. Uh, all right. So, you know, Counter Strike, CSGO, or you know, Valorant, or you know, FIFA. Yeah, it'd be interesting that I haven't played any of this in <laughs> my life, right? I'm not from another era, but I chose not to play them. I, I, I wish I could actually come check out the games that you play there, right? Uh, <laughs> like the guitar, for sure, certainly. Any books that you'd recommend? Uh, definitely, uh, that I'm a huge fan of Socrates, right? Uh, to go ahead and read the dialogues of Plato, right? You know, they consider him the, the first Western philosopher, the, the father of Western philosophy. Do go ahead and check it out because, uh, you know, it did have a very big impact on my life, right? It uh, teaches a lot of lessons, right? The most important one being always search for the absolute truth. You know what Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle said, right? Oh, uh, what was that? Which one? Democracy is the worst form of government. <laughs> so do you think Team Up is going to create democratic teams or will it be teams that are actually in a larger setup that is going to serve the larger entity? Uh, both. All right. At least uh, you know, the thing because, <laughs> because see, when I say democratic, right, it's always given, it always gives the freedom of choice. Right. There's always a freedom of choice given. And, um, you know, the way our system works right now, again, team leaders get to choose who they want. Right. Team leaders get to pick out the teammates that they want. Right? And that is where we see democracy and team joiners or the project joiners. They get to apply for teams that where their interests are aligned. And that is the democratic part of things. However, you know, you would want it to be communist as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> so you are serving Yeah. Okay. You're, you're looking at it from that angle. Okay. I looked at it from a, uh, or Star Wars Emperor perspective. <laughs> but anyway, that doesn't really matter. But again, other than Socr- Socrates, philosophy, uh, Plato, what else would you Sherlock, uh, Sherlock is great. Sherlock, is Sherlock great. Holmes. Okay. Yes. Um, Arthur Fowl. Conan Doyle is the author. Yes. Right? Who else? Um, Artemis Fowl. Artemis Fowl is a very good science fiction the book. The movie or the book? Uh, I hated the movie. I hated the movie. The book was okay. okay. They recommend the book. Okay. That's great, man. I mean, uh, all the best to you. You're lively, bubbly, and and I'm sure teaming up uh, needs uh, entrepreneurs like you. And uh, obviously, we need entrepreneurs like you to go and sell well uh, and make it big. Thank you so much for being on Pebble by Co Create. And I'll see you soon. Okay. We'll do a panel on, uh, we'll do a panel on democracy and psychometric analysis, (laughs) a science fiction site to human beings. Right. Should we do that? Okay. Take care of yourself, man. All the best. And again, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Shashank Lokesh of, go on, name your company. Teaming up. Okay. Teaming up. And that's Shashank Lokesh at teaming Right. We're going to leave his email at uh, the description below. You're going to go, 
contact him, whether you're a VC, be patient with him. He's not going to be patient with you. He's going to answer all your questions for sure. Yeah, curiosity is the name of the game with him.